am Lisanne Miller with W. Cushing & Company, and this is Third Thursday with Lisanne for July in conjunction with Rug Hooking Magazine. So, uh, first off, I hope that you have your latest issue of Rug Hooking Magazine. It's a great issue. Uh, there is the Sorter Village update, and we'll go over that at the end. The Wright Brothers rug, great rug the heart connections, and so on. Good reading, lots of information, uh, lots of painterly styles. The main event from last year, which was Maine, the state, uh, of which we were honored, very honored to be a part of since we've been in Maine since 1879. Also, a good reference book that was produced by Rug Hooking Magazine and available through them or through us direct, and I will sign it for you is Beautiful Wool in the Dye Kitchen with Lisanne. What we're gonna go over today is a portable dye kitchen. I know many of you have been waiting for it. And a lot of it is outlined in here. So this is a good reference along with your 70 dye recipes and other things to go along with what we are gonna talk about today. So let's get started. A lot of you don't wanna do dyeing. You don't, you know, you'd rather buy than dye, which is fine. But some of you say, I don't have a space for a dye kitchen. I don't want to dye inside. This is a portable dye kitchen where you can dye in your garage. You can dye outside as weather permits. You can uh, dye in your studio, but with have minimal cleanup. So let's go over a few things as basics to start. First, a plastic table. This is a plastic table, so it's easy to wipe off. It's a small table. It folds up flat. If you're really concerned about your floor, if you're not doing it outside on gravel or pavement or in a garage, put an old shower curtain underneath this, put the table on top, just make sure that it's stable and doesn't rock. But this is really a great table. You can fold it up flat, hang it on the wall. This is going to be your pot to die in. This is a turkey roaster. Now, I'm going to actually show you because turkey roasters, believe it or not, get confusing. So, I have tested many, many turkey roasters. I have t tested very, very, a lot of them. The Rival is the best. Um, I like it the best. It stands up. It goes longer than you can imagine. And please pay attention because this has the 14 quart. 14 quart is very important. Roaster oven, very important. If you have questions, let me know. If you can't find it, let me know. Um, this comes complete. And it's a great thing because when you're done dying, if you don't want to put it on a shelf in the garage or you want to separate your items, which you don't have to, you can put it back in the box. And, but it's got to be the 14 quart. It's the rival stands up to the dyeing. And save your styrofoam that it comes with. Save that styrofoam because you can put it back in there and transport it. So, the only assembly that's required with this is you need a Phillips head screwdriver to put these screws in for the handle. If you think it's going to slip too much on the plastic, go to the dollar. Uh, Dollar Tree and get two plastic placemats to put underneath. I have never had a problem with it. So let's introduce the turkey roaster. Here's your lid. Your lid becomes where you put your dyed wool to take and hang on a line. So this becomes the pan that you need to put your dyed wool in. Here is your dye pot, so to speak. And this is great because it's up on the sides. If you wear gloves, that's great, but you can push these up, pick this up, and pick your wool up. So you can leave it in, not leave it in. That's up to you. It comes with the turkey roaster, but that is a great use for it. And it folds down nice and flat. That's what we like. Okay. Here is our control. So after you've plugged it in, you may need an extension cord because you'll need two things to plug in, too. So here's your minimum, but you put this up at 300, 350. 
And when we go over how to dye in here, there's different ways that you can use this. But between 300 and 350, you can go up to 400, I wouldn't recommend it, but 350, 325, this has so many little controls over it that you've got it every 25 degrees like a stove. If you're new to dyeing, you don't have to guess. This is a hot surface, don't pick it up with your hands, but once you set it, you plug it in and we'll go over how long it may take based on what you're going to do with it. This at the end, you can wash it out. What you do in here is you're just going to take your Lemon Joy soap, you're going to wash it out with a, a sponge that has a little bit of a grip to it, not much, or just a plain sponge. Get it clean, let it air dry before we do anything else. So here is your dye pot. It's a nice dye pot. I'm gonna show you how to lay your wools in in a little bit, uh, different things you can do. Here is your tea kettle, your electric tea kettle. This is why you need two uh, plugins here and probably maybe a drop cord. I love this Hamilton Beach. It is a workhorse. More importantly, when it clicks off, it clicks off at the right temperature you don't have to get. So for, here is the Hamilton Beach electric kettle, 1.75 liter. It's stainless, it stands up to the test of time. We put these through our paces every day. It really works well. It comes in the two pieces. You click it on back here and you'll hear a click when it hits the temperature, it clicks off. I would put a pot holder or a towel underneath just to be safe in case it drips. But Hamilton Beach electric kettle, 1.75 liters. Do not get a fancy kettle, get a workhorse. You're gonna need the workhorse. Also good for afternoon tea and a few scones and you can invite me over for that. So next up, <laughs> spoon, metal spoon, wooden spoon, whatever you like. Four cup measure, you can do two, you can do three. There are three of them will fit in here like that, but you can do one. We have one for today's purposes. Your timer, any kind of kitchen timer works. Um, this one has a magnet on the back. We've taped it over, but you could put it in here or put it on the outside to hold it. Your die spoons in your jar doesn't, you know, you can have one, two, or as many as we have. And this is your salt. This is your kosher salt. And this is what you do to clean your dye spoon. So after you measure out, you clean that dye spoon and it takes the color out. When all of this here turns a color, you can dye with this as well. And we've done a demo on how to dye with your salt. So that's another good use of this. A Rubbermaid container to hold your packets of dye. Keeps everything safe. Um, seals it as you can see. And you can lay your packets in there. You can get quite a few packets in here. Seals back up. Now here's the beauty before we go to the how-to. I want to show you the beauty of this. If you have a shelf you want to put it on, then you put it on the shelf. Okay, you get at this out, make sure you get all the salt out, just like that, just like that, lay it down. You can put this in the bottom or this in the top, should go in the bottom. You put your dye books in there, voila, here's your dye kitchen with this. So two things on your shelf, you're ready to go. Dye books can fit in the top, your notes can fit in the top, anything you would like can fit in there. So here is your portable dye kitchen. So now let's see how we dye in it. We're not going to actually dye in it today, uh, but I will give you the how-tos. Okay. So suppose you want a dip dye. Dip dye is fantastic for this. This is a fantastic way to dip dye. You can cut it into quarters, long skinny, nine by 55. You can cut it into, you can have a yard. So you make your dye bath in here. So you're going to get your kettle boiled. Say you want four cups for your 
dip dye and you're going to use robin's egg blue so you put a half a teaspoon of robin's egg blue in there stir it up put it in the pan make sure that the temperature now it's the right temperature when you put it in but you keep it at 350. the beauty of the dip dye the beauty of the dip dye this is a half yard the beauty of the dip dye you can see it it's not above you like on a stove because the table's lower. So as you dip dye, and we do have a video uh, on how to dip dye, but as you dip dye, you've got enough, watch this as I go down, you've got enough in here to lay down and to lay it in here at the end. When you wanna take it out, yes, you could have another tray, but you can use your lid, pick it up with your spoon and put it in here to put it out to dry. This allows you to see how the color's absorbing. Now, what's your mordant? You would put your mordant in here because it is a dip dye. We do like the white vinegar, and everybody has white vinegar in their house, so when you made your dye bath, you would put in uh, just a quarter cup of vinegar in here, or less than a quarter, right in here. That's your mordant. You start to dip dye. You don't need to do another thing because it's set. So keep a jug of white vinegar uh, on the shelf as well, okay? So that's for a dip dye. Just say you wanted to dye it another way. You going to dye just a blue, just in a brash blue. So you're going to put a little bit of water, and this is another reason why I like the Rival. When you look at it, there's a ring down here. You can put, you wet your wool, put it in, might put a cup of water in with it. You make your dye bath, you put it at 350 and you let it get warm. Not too warm, but warm enough you can, where you can still touch it. You make your dye bath, you put it over it, you cover it, you're gonna steam it, and you let it sit at 350 for 20 minutes, use your timer, it'll come out beautifully. Suppose you want a swatch dye. Well, you're gonna cut them into the length that you want. Uh, an eighth of a yard is a great swatch dye to do in here. So we're gonna swatch dye navy blue. I'm gonna take a teaspoon of navy blue dye, put it in the four cups of water with the boiling water, put the vinegar in with this, pour it in here, set it at 350. Let it sit for 15 minutes. Then you start. You put your first strip in, you wait five minutes. And this is all outlined in the book. Then you go in at, after five minutes, you put the next one in for four minutes, then the next one in for three minutes, then the next one in for two minutes, then the next one in for a minute. And then when you're done, you have a swatch of color. Works great for this. Uh, and the swatch dyeing by timing is outlined in the book. The next thing that you can do in here, and you can dye up to a yard in here. So here is a yard of our cream fabric, okay? And we're gonna pretend it's wet, that we've wet it, we've done everything we're supposed to do. And we're gonna put it in here. Now you're gonna get a spotty spot. We've talked about spotty spots before. You do have a crowded pot. You're going to use your line in the bottom, put a little water in, this is already wet. You're gonna do your dye, whatever you would like, put it on 350, let it sit for 20, 25 minutes until it's set. Okay, uh, and you would just go along with your normal dye formulas any way that you see fit. If you need your dye bath in here to be extremely hot, you set it at 350, you let it put the lid on it, and you let it set for 15 to 20 minutes, then you're ready to go. So let's look at yarn. Here's our natural yarn. Yarns also work well in here. Like I said, it's a portable dye kitchen. It is just like a normal dye kitchen. And you can lay out your yarns. You can lay them out very flat, like this. You do have a curve. You can dip dye, just like this, if you so chose. Uh, but more importantly, you've gotta make sure that both your layers, now only one skein will fit in each layer. And notice I said each layer. When you're dyeing yarn, this is a good time to bring in this turkey roaster, uh, turkey lifter, sorry, turkey lifter. Oh, and by the way, don't cook your Thanksgiving turkey in this after you've dyed in it. 
It's once you use it for dyeing, it's only for dyeing. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay this out and lay it out just like that. You're gonna pour your dyes where you would like the dyes to be poured in. Make sure that there's enough water in here. At first, you go up to this first little line and the first little line is very predominant in here when you see your turkey roaster. Um, keep it at 350, pour your dyes in when you're, cover it. When you're done, you lift it up like this. You don't have to worry now about breaking these strings, which then makes a holy Hannah of a mess with the yarn. So this is a good way. And once you dye on one side, of course, you have to flip it and dye on the other side if it has not gone through. And make sure when you dye the yarn, as we've gone over before, you move the strings around so there's no white pieces. So that's how you would dye the yarn. But this is a good use for the turkey lifter. Now, so you want a lot of modeling. You're gonna put, the more wool you put in here, the more it's gonna be modeled. So what do we mean by that? We want a lot of highs, we want a lot of lows. So a lot of modeling, and this is a, a bicolor, but a lot of modeling is this. You've got a lot of highs, you've got a lot of lows. If you crowd the pot, you're gonna get a lot of highs and a lot of lows. You can pour one color, two color, three colors to make it a tri-color, a bi-color, this is two colors, uh, whatever you would like. But this is heavily modeled. You can still move it around after you pour the dye to make sure you don't have white spots but make sure you cook it for the 20, 25 minutes or until the water is clear. If you don't want a lot of modeling, you want it to be more of a solid, then you would use a smaller piece and not crowd the pot as much. Not as much modeling, uh, a little bit uh, softer look. You would probably only use a half a yard, not a full yard. You'll still get some modeling if you scrunch it up this is also, the turkey roaster is also good for the sparkle wool. It will not burn the sparkle wool as long as you keep it at 350. And it works to keep the sparkle safe. You know, you don't want the pot too hot. But also I find in the turkey roaster, the sparkle wool comes out a little bit brighter. And as long as you're not looking for a lot of highs and lows, uh, half yard at a time, quarter yard at a time, you can use and the sparkle wool will work. If you've never used the silver or gold sparkle wool, Turkey Roaster is a great way to start with that. And your dip dye you can use, you can use a spot dye, you can scrunch this up and do the spot dye and come out with something like this, where you have a spot dye with multiple colors and um, I would do these a half yard at a time. I wouldn't do a whole yard because you do have to scrunch how to spot dye and different spot dye colors are again in the book. But you can do a spot dye like this in the book. But don't go to a yard because you'll get too many highs and lows. Or a lot of times when you overcrowd your dye pot, you are going to get mud because you don't have enough space for each color to breathe. Think about that. If your pot is overcrowded, it comes together like mud. You need each color that you put down to expand and breathe, and that really does help. So when you're setting this, your portable dye kitchen up, make sure that you have enough in there with a half yard, quarter yard, but not a full yard if you want a real spot, so that each color as you put it down can breathe. And then put the lid on, okay? Um, it's great. It's great for personal use. It works. Um, you might wanna keep a pair of hot pads around. Uh, I don't, but they will fit back in here. It allows you to have your dye kitchen to dip your toe into dyeing. Uh, you can do onion skin dyeing here. You know, the, these are things that you can do. Uh, you may have a bunch of what we call, it's not ugly wool, it's just wool you'd never hook. And maybe they're in quarter eighths, they're nibs, nabs. So you take your nibs and nabs, 
you soak them, you put them in here, you cover them so that they're covered with the water and you pour our black walnut or golden brown or seal brown over it all and you've got a beautiful antique brown black ground. So, you know, there's different things that you can do or maybe you want mixed reds for a Santa, same thing. This is a great way because you do get extra room when you put the lid on and that allows the steaming to come in. So, again, the lid is important for two uses. You let it go, keep it in, it steams it, keeps it nice, instead of wrapping it with foil like we've done. And then it also is your tray to put your wool in to carry to hang out. So that works really, really well. I do want to touch one other type of dyeing, which we do have in the book, which is snow dyeing, which we're not going to be snow dyeing in July, but you can snow dye in this as well in smaller quantities. And it allows you with the lid not to do the last step of covering it with foil. So you can also do your ice cube dyeing. You can substitute the snow for ice cubes and you can put a layer of ice cubes on to let it melt. Um, of course, ice cube dyeing and snow dyeing is not really repeatable, but you get some awesome results. But then when you put the lid in, lid on, it actually acts like the foil, so you're good. So, a lot of different techniques that you can use in here. It's portable. You saw everything goes back in. You can put it on your shelf in the garage, take it back out again. It's great, great thing to do. Uh, love it when you're done. The exhaust water can be dumped right into the grass. Don't burn the grass, don't burn your plants if it's hot, uh, but you can put it right into the grass and away you go. So remember, you've got to set it with vinegar, have your vinegar jug. So the things, everything will go into your portable dye pot. You'll have your great, great tea kettle and a jug of vinegar, not too bad. So I hope that you enjoy this. I hope you'll try it. And until August, we will see you soon. And I hope to see many of you at Souter Village. Rug Hooking Week at Souter Village um, is an extremely special time. Wonderful displays, great vendors, uh, lots of lectures. So uh, we will be there vending. I do have a lecture coming up and uh, it will be on storybooks. And also there's another, there's a couple of other wonderful lectures a lot of specialty shows this year, and they look just awesome just from the write-ups. So if you can get there, please, uh, we look forward to seeing you. Have a great day. Bye-bye for now.